Hello people, welcome to Code Framer. In this video, we are going to look at two extremely important concepts in Python. They are, Python identifiers, and reserved keywords. At the end of the video, I have a set of questions, using which you can test your understanding. Take a cup of coffee, and be ready to take your notes. Give your complete attention to understand these topics. So, without wasting any more time, let us get into the video. Sit back and enjoy. What are Python identifiers? It is very important for any programming language to have a clear and well-defined differentiation between various programming entities. Examples of entities in Python are a variable, a function, a class, a module, an object, etc. So basically, an identifier is just a name to identify these entities. Just like you have a name, using which your friends and family members identify you or call you. Similarly, your friends must have names, using which you call them. For example, if you ask someone, Hi John, how are you doing? Here the name John, is an identifier of that person. So you can visualize all the names which you use to identify any person, any object, or anything, is known as an identifier. Similarly, in Python all the entities, can be given a name for identification, and those names are known as identifiers. Identifiers are sometimes confused with variables. It is important to understand, that they are slightly different. A variable is an entity in Python, and the name of the variable is an identifier. So, a variable is like a container, which stores some form of data. When we define a variable, a memory location is allocated in the computer's memory, to store a value, so that later, the stored value can be accessed from that memory location. In order to identify this memory location or memory address, we need a human readable name to represent the memory location. In this example, the memory address is recognized by the variable name, employee underscore age. So, for the developer, the data from this memory address can be accessed using the variable name, employee underscore age. This variable name employee underscore age, is called as an identifier. So, basically a variable can be visualized as a container, or memory address to store values, and the name of that variable is an identifier. There are certain rules and conventions, that we need to follow in Python to write identifiers. First, identifiers can be written in uppercase letters. Generally, identifiers with uppercase letters, are used to store constant values only. For example, value of pi, is always constant. As you might already know, the value of pi is, 3.14. To store the value of pi, you can create a variable, pi underscore value, with full uppercase letters. So, if you want to store a constant value, it is always preferable to use identifiers in uppercase letters, as it will improve the readability of the code, and you can easily recognize all the variables with constant values. Second, Python identifiers can be written in lowercase letters, for example, student underscore age equals 15. All the variables and functions in Python, are defined in lowercase letters. Third, Python identifiers can include digits, for example, employee underscore one underscore age equals 25, and employee underscore two underscore age equals 30. It is important to remember, that digits should be included in identifiers, only when they hold meaningful information. If it does not include any meaning, then it is better avoid using digits in identifiers. Fourth, multiple words in an identifier, can be separated with underscores. For example, a variable named total distance covered, can be written like this, total underscore distance underscore covered, where each word is separated with underscores. It is extremely important to add the underscores, in between words, while declaring identifiers. It significantly improves the readability of the code. Fifth, identifier should not start with digits. So a variable name, count one, is correct, but a variable name, one count, is incorrect, as it starts with a digit. Sixth, use of special characters are not allowed in identifiers. For example, exclamation marks, hash symbols, at the rate, percentage, dollars, etc. In the below example, variable name, money is written with a special character, dollar symbol. While executing the print statement of this variable, the interpreter throws an invalid syntax error, pointing at the dollar symbol. This means that the interpreter refuses to accept the identifier name, as it has a special character, 
which is dollar symbol. Seventh, reserved keywords should not be used to declare an identifier. For example, in record, equals true, is correct. But, in, equals true, is an incorrect statement, because, in, is a reserved keyword in Python. We will discuss reserved keywords shortly. Eighth, identifiers must not have white spaces in between. For example, if we want to declare a variable for body temperature, then declaring a variable with a white space between these two words, will lead to error. Python interpreter, will not consider the words as a single identifier name. Hence, the words in the identifiers, must be separated with an underscore, so that interpreter will consider it as a single identifier name. Ninth and last point, identifiers can be of any length, but writing short and meaningful names, are more readable, and recommended. For example, if you want to write a function, to calculate the area of different cities, then instead of writing the function name, as calculate the area of different cities, you can write a short and meaningful name, as calculate city area. This will not only improve the readability of the code, but also make it easier to reuse this function, in other places of the application. There are a few more conventions to keep in mind. First, any identifier starting with a single underscore, indicates that it is a private identifier. Second, any identifier starts with double underscores, indicates that it is a strongly private identifier. And third, any identifier which has double underscores in the end, indicates that it is a language-specific special identifier. In order to understand the meaning of private identifier, strongly private identifier, and language-specific identifier, we must have in-depth understanding of other Python basic concepts. So, don't worry about those terms as of now. You will understand it quite easily in future videos. All the conventions that I mentioned till now, are applicable for function names as well. For example, to declare a function, that calculates the salary of an employee, you can create a function, and name it, calculate underscore employee underscore salary. Here, the identifier name is calculate underscore employee underscore salary. As you can see, all the conventions are followed, to name this function identifier as well. If you are thinking about class names, then I would recommend not to go there as of now. I will cover classes during object-oriented programming tutorials. But for now, just remember that, class names are also known as identifiers. By the way, rules and conventions for using the identifiers, are very important things to remember, and one must bring this into practice, so that when you are working on large-scale projects in future, these conventions come naturally in your code. This will help you on many fronts. For example, you will be able to write easily understandable and readable code. While troubleshooting bugs and issues in an application, a readable code will help the developer, to spot the bug quickly, and eventually it will save a lot of time. For new feature development in the application, if any changes are required, in an already existing code base, then you can make changes, with more confidence and clarity. Having meaningful and short identifier names, will also help newcomers in your team, to read the code, and understand the logic instantly. This will save a lot of time, to train the new resources. The advantages are numerous if you think about it. So I strongly recommend you to watch this section multiple times, and bring it in your practice, so that in the long run, it becomes natural. Now let us get into the next topic. What are reserved keywords? Reserved keywords are the actual syntax and structure of the language. As the name clearly suggests, these keywords are reserved, for the language itself, which means, that the user, cannot use these keywords, as an identifier, to name any entities. So, basically, reserved keywords are used to represent, certain meanings and functionalities of the language. Hence, these keywords are strictly prohibited for the user, to use them as identifiers. There are 35 reserved keywords, as on Python 3.8. Here is the list of keywords, in Python 3.8 open source documentation. Understanding all these keywords, will take some time, as each keyword, is a separate topic in itself. Once you understand all the keywords, it is equivalent to understanding the entire core Python concepts. So, I will take you through all of these keywords, and corresponding concepts, in the upcoming videos. But, for now, it is sufficient to understand, 5 most important things about reserved keywords. They are. First, if you notice carefully, all the reserved keywords, are having only alphabets. So, 
no numerical value or special characters, are used in any of the reserved keywords. Second, all the reserved keywords, are written in lowercase letters. Except the three reserved keywords, and they are, true, false, none. If you notice, only these three keywords, are starting with an uppercase letter, and remaining all other keywords, are written only in lowercase letters. Third, switch statements are not available in Python. If you have a programming background, then you must be familiar with switch statements, in C programming language and Java programming language. But, remember that in Python, switch statements are not available. Such operations, are carried out using, if-else statements. We will discuss if-else statements, which are also known as conditional statements, in a future video. Fourth, Python does not have, do-while, statements. But, in C programming and Java, you will find those statements. So just remember, that in Python, they are not available. And hence, you don't have such keywords in Python. Fifth and last point. In Python, data types are not required to be declared. For example, in Java programming language, which is also known as, strongly typed programming language. Every variable has to be declared, with a type. For example, int, count, equals 10. As you can see in this example, the variable count, is declared with a data type, int, which stands for, integer data type. But, in Python, no such data type declaration is required. Because, the Python interpreter, automatically decides the type of variable, on the fly. For example, if, a variable, count equals 10, is declared in Python, then the interpreter, will automatically consider this as an integer variable. Hence, keywords related to the data types, like, int for integer, char for character, boolean, float, etc., are not available in Python. This is because, Python is a dynamically typed programming language, where the interpreter takes dynamic decisions, based on the value of variables, and allocates the data types accordingly. I personally find this very cool. By the way, we can still use these data types in Python, for typecasting of variables. We will discuss the concept of typecasting, in a future video. For now, it is more than sufficient, to understand these concepts, about reserved keywords. I will explain each keyword extensively, in the upcoming videos, where we will deep dive into Python basics. Now, time for the questions. I would recommend you to pause the video, and answer the questions, and later you can verify the answer. Here is the list of questions, and you can pause the video now. Okay, I hope you would have answered all the questions by now, so I am showing the answers. I hope you have answered most of the questions correctly. If not, then no worries at all, you just need one more round of understanding. So, go through the video one more time, maybe at a slower speed, and try to understand the concepts clearly. Get used to such iterations of understanding the concepts. It is going to be a new normal in your life, if you are new to programming. In the next video, we will go further deep, into the basics of Python. If you like this video, then hit the like button, and also subscribe to our channel to learn different technologies. See you in the next video. Enjoy learning.